Hey guys, Christina Ricci. If you want more PARS, join me in this segment. It's a series of getting better compression through optimizing your body, posture, and wrist hinge. All right, it's all about solid ball striking, but we're focusing on those three things. All right, and this is the last part of the segment where we're focusing on the wrists. All right, we're gonna focus more on the trail wrist because it's the dominant hand for most players and it's easier to control. All right, we still need to add a little flexion on the lead hand to square the face. I recommend a neutral to slightly stronger grip for most players, stronger grip for females, just because it's easier to square the face. You don't have to worry so much about the lead hand. We're gonna focus on the trail hand because it's gonna help us get our trail elbow in front, stay in posture so we can get this club head behind the hands pre-delivery. All right, we don't want it out in front because that's when you pull it, top it, chunk it, slice it off the tee. So before we start worrying about wrists, we need to make sure that our body is optimal so it can stay in posture. That's number one. All right, good. Now go to the top of your swing. Get your, get, go ahead, get a little wider with your stance. Guys, the reason why I like a wider stance is because you can feel the ground more. Narrow stance, you can't get into your butt. All right, you have to be able to stay in posture because if you try to create angles and stand up out of your posture, it's going to be a mismatch. All right, it's not going to happen. So we need to stay in our posture to be able to maintain our angles. All right, now the precision impact is awesome because it's going to help you get that trail hand wrist hinge. All right, we need this to get that club head behind the hands on the downswing. All right, that is paramount. When players go off is the early release and that club head goes out like this. All right, so you lose all your angles. So we need to keep the club head behind the hands as we stay in our posture. And then we're gonna swing a little bit out to the right. All right, so watch that video as well on swing direction. And I get inside, oh, cool. Now I see the circle. All right, now I'm gonna lay some shafts down. That's the target line. And the ball's right there. And then from the top of the swing through the strike zone, the circle is taking you where? All right, get your lead but on the wall. Good, now release out, release. Good, that was awesome, very nice. You gotta be able to stay in your posture, get into a good posture with a hip hinge, neutral back and crack knees, and then get your butt deep on that imaginary wall all right, so then that's gonna create space. Get your lead butt deep and that creates space for your arm structure to work through. All right, from this front side, bang, bang. All right, that's key. All right, we need posture to be able to get our arm structure in front and be able to keep our trail hand wrist hinge. All right, paramount that you get that first. All right, now that you have that or grooving it, Let's go ahead and train the wrists. All right, we are gonna use the precision impact, which is awesome. It's gonna train the trail hand wrist hinge. When I first put this on, I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna hit a ball? <laughs> All right, but then you get used to it real fast. All right, and you need to determine when you're practicing, all right, without a ball to start, do you wanna load this trail hand wrist hinge during the backswing, or during the downswing. I like focusing on the trail hand wrist hinge because it's typically the dominant hand of most players. So it's easy to control versus the non-dominant hand of the lead hand. All right, we do need to bow the knuckles down a little bit to square the face. All right, that's important. Because if we come in here, we're in our awesome posture, bang, and we have that trail hand wrist hinge, bang, but the club face is wide open because the ball marker of my glove is facing the sky, all right, you're gonna shank it or slice a rama. So it's important to square the face. What I like about the Precision Impact, one, it's super comfortable. The key is you just gotta make sure when you put it on that the, these are at the base of your fingers, all right, that's key, and then, the other key, make sure that each time you use it, you release it. And then you, you shift this over. So if I put my arm straight down, the precision impact should favor the right side of your forearm. All right, you don't want it stacked on top of your forearm. You want it slightly to the right. 
so you can properly hinge. All right, this is gonna help you get that trail elbow in front. So if you have a stronger grip, you won't have to add as much flexion or bow, knuckles down, all right? If you have a weaker grip, you're gonna have to add a ton. All right, so I recommend a neutral to slightly stronger grip so you don't have to worry so much about the lead hand, all right? But you do have to roll it down a little bit to square the face, all right? This would be wide open and then we're square on the face, all right? This would be too much, all right? And this is, this is what I wanna work on. This is the trail hand, because I think that's just easier for folks. And with the precision impact, with this auditory feedback, it's, it's just a no-brainer because the downswing is under a second. So you can't really think about much. All right, and I don't want you to think. I want you to feel and hear. You're going to go to the top. It's a lot more intuitive. Boom. Get your butt deep. Bang. Make sure you hear the sound of the precision impact. And then swing through. All right. I like to load it in the backswing. That's for just my preference. But a lot of players, they like to load it on the downswing. All right, so you can see the club head's behind your hands. I'm in my posture, my chest is down, my butt is cleared. I'm poised to hit a great shot. Find out, do you like to load it during the backswing or the downswing when you're using this, all right? And then just start with little shots just to get the feel. So the purpose of training aids is feedback. They act as your coach. A lot of players out there think training aids are gimmicks, and they're not. They're your coach if you use them properly. All right, so you use them for like a half a bucket, then you take it away. All right, but this is easy to use. It's intuitive. It gives you nice feedback with the sound. I love it. I use it in my camps. Definitely give it a shot. All right, this is going to be a great training aid for you. Matter of fact, I want you to leave a comment. Let me know how you like it. Use the link below if you want to use the code for a little discount. I highly recommend it.